Hello and welcome back to another installment to Pokey Fodder where I discuss geolocation in AR style mobile games. In today's video, we are talking about Jurassic World Alive and more specifically, the events of May 3rd through May 9th. But not only that, on Friday, we may have had a sneak peek as to something to come in the very near future. And I don't know if it's a good thing. Before I get into this new potential change into Jurassic World Live, and it's a move that's actually changing, that it looks like we may have had a text change before an actual implementation of said change, I'm gonna talk about the week ahead. For the week of May 3rd through May 9th, it is gonna be the Stun and Wound Week. On Monday and Tuesday, you're going to have 18 attempts at two different common creatures, Triceratops Gen 2, and Eniosaurus. Moving on over to the rares for the week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Nasu... Nasutoceratops, I guess? Draco Rex and Triceratops of the three. Like they're all, none of these are bad, but of the three, I would either prioritize Draco Rex or Nasu... <laughs> Nasutoceratops as far as those are the more difficult to come by. They are exclusives. Triceratops, I believe is a Sunday rare spawn so while you do have limited opportunities to dart triceratops you do have more than you do with the other two you have 18 attempts on these I'm, i might go nine nine depending on what your priorities are if you were going to skew one way or the other i'd probably go to nasuto ceratops over draco rex again it all kind of depends at this point what your priorities are and then if we move on over into the weekend on saturday and sunday we are going to have nine attempts and there's really only one option here you have woolly rhino a stiggy moloch or griposuchus woolly rhino is hands down exclusive dna it is the one that you really want to be darting i would say probably for 99 percent of the people watching this video woolly rhino is going to be the way to go if you were to go a different direction you could make an argument for Gryposuchus, except for the fact that it is a normal spawn, so it's not exclusive. And Stiggy Moloch, yeah, yeah, you know what? Now that I'm looking at this even closer, there's just really no reason to go any direction other than Woolly Rhino. And normally I don't talk about the incubators that are ahead for the week at all, but this week, if the if the calendar is correct, it looks like we're going to have two themed epic incubators. On Wednesday, you can look for Hast Eagle, which is exclusive DNA. And on Friday, it looks like you're going to have a chance to pick up 200 extra Woolly Rhino DNA as it is a themed incubator. That makes two. I'm not sure that I've ever seen two themed incubators in the same week. A nice change, both of them exclusive DNA. Definitely worth your time to go out and get those. And if I'm looking closer on Wednesday, it looks like we have a rare incubator that is themed. I've never seen this before, and it, it appears to be Titanoboa Gen 2. Now, if you've ever tried to dart one of those, you know that they are very difficult. Uh, they may be the most difficult things to dart in the game, the snakes. And I'm, I'm not sure that I've ever seen a rare themed, and that is going to be on Wednesday as well. And then looking forward to Sunday, you're going to have a normal epic incubator and then the treasure chase chests, which is extremely difficult to say, come back and you know, you can get up to 50,000 coin depending on where you are in the world. And if you max out your coins before the reset happens, it is possible. Now for the change that I referenced at the beginning of this video that may or may not be good. I, I personally haven't decided yet. I know that a lot of people when they saw this change in the text were not happy about it. I've thought about it a little bit and I'm not sure, like I'm not sure exactly how much it actually changes except for in one particular situation. I can see it being really good. But other than that, I don't know. I don't know. But what I'm talking about is swapping stunning strike if you've been playing the game for a while you remember once upon a time and I'm, i want to say it was before 2.0 although i don't like all the updates kind of blur together at a certain point but i want to say it was right prior to 2.0 griposuchus had a text change within their description although it wasn't implemented and then when 2.0 dropped all of a sudden the the text changed and i don't really remember what it was it had something to do with stuns but yeah, like I said, I honestly, I just don't remember. There was a text 
change or a change in the, the text description of the creature that didn't hit the game until the next update. And we've had the same thing happen on Friday. The move that I'm talking about is swapping Stunning Strike. Now, if you are like me, you're swapping Stunning Strike creatures. By the way, just to recap, that is going to be your, your Sarah Magnus. It's going to be your Eni Suchis, your Eniosaurus, your Mono Little Rhino, which Woolly Rhino, you know, Mono Stegotops, Nasutoceratops, your Sinoceratops, your Stegoceratops, your Triceratops, your Triceratops Gen 2, and then the aforementioned Woolly Rhino. Previous to Friday, the description on this move said it targeted the highest damage creature, and that only really applies to raids. As of right now, you can't swap in on raids. So it's interesting that that is actually in there, maybe a foreshadowing of something to come in a future update. But you had a 66% chance to stun the opponent that you're swapping into. It's going to last one turn. Your attack was going to be a one times damage and it bypassed armor, and this is on Sarah Magnus. Previous to Friday, the description of this move for Swap and Stunning Strike was it targeted highest damage. Now, this is really interesting because you can't swap in on raids. And so I wonder if that's foreshadowing something to come in a future update because there's no need to say what or whom it targets, okay, basically what it targets on a swap and move. It just, you only swap into one creature. So maybe maybe swap ins are going to come to raids I, I don't know you had a 66 percent chance to stun your opponent which lasted one turn it was a one times attack damage which bypassed armor but then around mid-morning late morning on friday it was changed in text only remind this is text only and in practice it has not taken effect yet but in text only you now have a 100% chance to stun your opponent. I tested this as soon as the update get, or the change came out and I went to stun. I put, I put an entire team of those eight or nine creatures. I put an entire team of them out on the field and all I did was swap. And then I did dig in and I swapped and I did dig in and I swapped. And um, yeah, I stunned two out of seven, which is less than 66% or 67% by a good margin. So the 100% is going to be nice there. The, the problem that I can see happening when you talk about Sarah Magnus is you have the swap and stun that does one times damage and it's 100% stun. So we'll, we'll just take Thor because this is the most prominent example that I can think of. Your opponent has Thor Dolosaur, which is, we'll say, since they're all faster than like 114, so your opponent has Thor Dolosaur. You swap into Sarah Magnus. You do 100% stun, boom, homeboy stunned, right? Now, Thor Dolosaur has an instant charge move that can attack you back, but you know, I, I, I actually don't think Sarah Magnus, if I check real quick, yeah, it's 100% resistant to stun. He does an instant charge. Okay, so you get hit with one times damage, but you're not going to be stunned. Then you can speed up. Or you can just go Rampage right there and then speed up on the next turn. And I, I'm pretty sure most Thors at that point, they're going to be done. So, yeah, if this actually goes into practice, and like I said, as of recording this video, the move is not reflective of the description. It, it's still the old, it's still reflective of the old description. But if it is foreshadowing of a change to come, Yikes. And then, you know, Wooly Rhino is already really strong. Monolo Rhino is already really strong, especially not only in the battle arenas, but when you start talking about some of these weekend tournaments, Nasuto Ceratops is really strong. I know a lot of people are, are using Monolo Rhino, Wooly Rhino, uh, the, the Stego Ceratops in some of those epic um, weekends. And then you can stun and then you can dig into cleanse and then get out again. And that, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know down, down in the comments below. Does that break this move or is it a good move? For those of you who have been playing since the inception of Jurassic World Alive, you will remember there was once upon a time where stuns got completely nerfed almost to the ground. Not, not quite, but they got nerfed pretty hard because a lot of people were complaining. Some creatures had the ability to just like absolutely stun lock you. And I kind of feel like with with somebody who's smarter than I am, they could craft a team that would that would cause a lot of damage just stunning you, swapping in, dig in, and then swapping out and stunning and just keep doing damage. Again, it's going to take someone a lot smarter than me to figure that out if this change actually goes into effect. Additionally, it's going to put a higher priority 
on those creatures that are immune or resistant to stun. And in case you are wondering, no, this does not apply to something like Smilonimis, which has swap and stun. And I personally don't understand that. To me, if you're doing a swap in stunning strike, the attack is what you're going for. The stun is a byproduct that could enhance the attack. If you have a creature like Smilonimis that's just a swap in stun, there's no damage associated with it, that really should be 100%. Because what, what do you gain by swapping in a swap in stun creature? There's no damage, and you may or may not even stun your opponent. There's it's kind of a wasted move. There's no upside to that move. So I'm, I'm hoping maybe they just coded this wrong and swap and stun was supposed to be 100%. Although I have a feeling that they made this change and the text is reading the way that it's going to whenever we get another update. If you found today's information helpful, make sure you like the video. And if you want to know when and if this change actually does go into effect, make sure that you are subscribed that way you'll be alerted when the next video drops. That's all I've got for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time.